What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's Super here, and welcome back to another video. This is gonna be something that's been highly requested, because a lot, of, a lot of people like to see these kind of videos, and because I like to stay current with the times, I'm doing something, a video that uh, was popular six months ago, because there's nothing to do right now <laughs> i avoided doing these videos not because i didn't like them it's just because i didn't even know how to create a list i didn't know what website to go to and i had so much to do with mkx mk11 injustice blah 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 but right now this is literally the absolute dead time in fighting games for me personally <laughs> I don't want to play MKX, I don't want to play MK11, I don't want to play Injustice right now. So here I am, scraping the bottom of the barrel and uh, doing these tier list videos. So if you want to see me do some more tier list videos for NetherRealm games or like, you know, anything else, write your suggestion down in the comment section. So here we go. By the way, uh, True Underdog is the one who made like the template or template for this specific tier list with all the guest characters lined up nicely so i didn't have to do anything so shout out to him for that i'm gonna try to condense the screen as small as i can because there's a lot of like you know dead space a lot of white in the background so here we go so all these guest characters in my opinion are just really cool because it's something like i love guest characters because it's just something that's different from the traditional game that they're in you know some mortal kombat obviously when would you ever see a mortal kombat character fight freddy krueger you know what i mean so like scorpion versus freddy and then you have like hellboy talking shit to some of these other characters like like sub-zero like superman it's just really cool man i love guest characters i hope they maintain the tradition of having like four guest characters per per game I, I love guest characters that's why i'm doing this list first so let's get us started here we're gonna move from left to right s tier a tier b c and d i really don't see any character that's gonna go on the d tier for me maybe there's one that i could think of right now but let's see what happens i'm just gonna base these characters off off of my experiences and mostly the fun factor and how they look so alien i think alien I'm, I'm gonna put right here in the middle because i think alien is super fun conjure alien really saves that character for me i like acidic and everything um but i think conjure it just really scratches that itch that i have for like setup characters and just visually having you know an alien fall from the sky to help you out um having the uh the egg the face hugger come out and trap you I think Conjure Alien really like makes Alien super fun for me. Uh, the way he looks, uh, he looks like Alien. You know what I mean? It's nothing, nothing too crazy. I like the idea they have with the Tarkatan Alien, um, but the other two variations are like I, right, you know. And I'm not really gonna consider like how broken Alien was. I'll consider like versions of the characters because you know there's always patches. Um, so I'll consider that. But as far as like my rating it's just mostly going to be fun factor so i think alien is like right in the middle right in the middle as far as uh rating these guest characters so that's a good starting point moving on here we got freddy krueger and you guys know i love freddy krueger so much i bought a replica claw of nightmare on elm street 4 which actually has like you know steel claws they're not sharp or anything but they're actually steel it's really cool, man. I, I love Freddy Krueger so much. Definitely by far my favorite horror movie icon. Uh, and if Robert England was the Freddy Krueger that they used, I definitely would have had him at S tier based off of my fanboyness for Freddy Krueger. As far as gameplay wise, I know he's a zoning character, but I've played Freddy like a limited amount of time and... Man, obviously his zoning is really good, and his teleport is crazy, but he has some really cool combos, like just visually the way some of his combos look, and a lot of the references. I really, really had a fun time 
playing Freddy Krueger when I did actually play him. Uh, he does some damage, man. He has some setups. And obviously, his zoning is ridiculous. So I'm actually going to put Freddy, even though I have the second least experience playing that character out of all these characters, I'm going to put him in the A tier because from what I played him, he's really fun. The only reason I'm not putting him at S is because it's the Nightmare on Elm Street from, what, 2011? Or, like, the new Nightmare on Elm Street? Nah, man. Fuck that. I am putting him in S tier. If it was Robert England, though... 100% would have been S tier. All right, next up is Hellboy. I remember when I saw Hellboy be one of the guest DLC characters. It was a huge surprise, man. I was like, what the f What is this? Like, how the hell is Hellboy going to be entertaining and fun? You know, he's just a big dude and mostly what i had seen from the hellboy movie he just shoots his gun right another zoner here we go in justice 2 but they definitely <laughs> definitely blew it out the water with hellboy because this mofo is really really fun to play he is really fun to play and the only reason that i'm gonna put him in the eight tier is because he needs to work on his legs he skips leg day so I'm going to keep him at A. But Hellboy, like, flying around, you guys know I, I played a lot of Hellboy throughout Injustice 2. I somehow figured out the infinite armor that he had at one point, which was, like, a little glitch on one of his uh, custom moves. And, you know, made a couple videos on it. Then they took that shit out because that, that literally was the most broken move of all time. It was insane. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, just search up on my channel like Hellboy Infinite Armor or something like that. You guys will be shocked if you've never seen it. But because he doesn't work out legs and he's all upper upper body, I'm going to have to keep him at A. All right, moving on here, we got Jason Voorhees. Jason, <laughs> Jason really surprised me with how many different moves they incorporated into his character to actually make him unique and interesting in all three of his variations like it's fucking jason voorhees what the hell could they do with this character and they literally sucked the character dry as far as picking every unique things from the movies and incorporating it into his actual character design to make him interesting in all three variations i really really love playing all three of his variations you got the red screen of death you have his infinite armor you have his teleport you have his um his resurrection and then you have the brawler in uh in slasher jason i think jason is going to be the first s tier character i th because all three of his variations are just so much fun there's so much fun to play and, I mean, his design, like, it's pretty easy, right? Fucking giant dude with a hockey mask. But as far as gameplay-wise, like, he's just so much fun. One of my favorite characters to play in all of MKX. All right, Joker. I'm just going to, like, put him up here, okay? I'm one of the biggest Joker fanboys of all time. I love every iteration of Joker. Going back from old-school comic books where he was more of a prankster to Cesar Romero and all the way to Joaquin Phoenix, who I think is the greatest Joker of all time. What they did with this character blew my mind because based off of like a lot of characters that were put into MK11, you know, I figured a lot of them were going to be the same or I guess more so the characters that they put in Injustice 2 from MKX. I thought that that's what we were going to get with Joker in MK11. A legacy character. I thought we were going to have Chattering Teeth. I thought we were going to have like the canister, the gun. We had the gun. Or I guess it's, it's like the Batman, Batman uh, puppet has a gun in its mouth. But we, we got a version of the gun, but literally everything else was different. Everything else was different. 
Even the crowbar. It turned into a pimp cane. Because that's the kind of guy Joker is. And the amount of unique moves that he has is just honestly it blew my mind i really did not expect joker to be as crazy as he was even though it is joker and they have a lot that they could work with and i'm glad that they took advantage of that instead of making it a copy and paste from injustice one because injustice one joker man injustice one joker is so much fun to play but they took it like over the top times three with joker from mk11 absolutely amazing gameplay design for that character like i i said before man whoever designed joker deserves a raise because the creativity and his like play style and his moves oh man so much so much fun he's right up there with another guest that you guys are going to see here as top three for me favorite characters in mk11 to play and just top three favorite characters in general all right so this is the character that i'm gonna put in d this is the one character because i never played him i never played kratos because i always own an xbox 360 so when i did have mortal kombat 9 and i played it i never played kratos so i have no experience playing this character I have no experience playing this character. Also, he was banned from tournaments. So he never even made an appearance in tournaments because he's a PS3 exclusive character. So I don't think I've ever seen gameplay of Kratos. I mean, I could go search it up on YouTube, obviously, but I'm still going to rank him at the bottom of the barrel because I never played him. So I have no, no opinions on him. Next up, we have Leatherface. Man, this is going to be hard because I don't want to put everyone in S because Leatherface, again, I'm a huge fan of just the character in general. Uh, they did a really good job of getting the Leatherface from like the 2003 film with uh, Butcher and they paid homage to the original and of course the Pretty Lady and even though people don't like Pretty Lady because it's more of a zoning character, you could still play pretty lady offensively uh and do some cool stuff man you could you could do some cool stuff and just visually seeing leatherface on the screen wielding that big ass chainsaw he has and cutting people in half is just a joy to see but i can't put him in s tier i can't put him in s tier so i'm gonna put him in a I can't put you in S tier Leatherface. I'm sorry. I don't want to hear your cries. You make me feel sad every time I beat you up. Feels like I'm hitting a kid. But I can't put you in S tier, man. That's only reserved for characters like this. Do I even need to explain to you guys that Predator is s tier guest character for nether realm games do i like do i need to explain anything other than he is the most fun character i think i've ever played in my life in my life any fighting game i think predator more specifically in hunter but also warrior keeping his pimp hands strong even in hishku 10 with the plasma cancels this character has three unique variations that are in like the top 10 of most fun in MKX, which is insane. I don't know how Netherrealm did it. I don't think they'll ever create a character as fun as Predator is in MKX. You could just do so much with the tools that he has. There's no need to use interactables to extend your combos. There's no need to do any anything extra you don't need to put any extra moves on him his base character set with the variations that they give you is enough to have all the creativity that you want in a character god damn predator you know what put him right here he's like he's he's the tippity top 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 of all these characters for me lord raiden the Magic Mike version of Lord Raiden. He was working for tips in this game. He 
he was pretty much his MKX version, and I don't really play the MKX version of Raiden. I don't really play Raiden. I don't like Raiden that much. So, I mean, I had, like, decent fun with him, and one thing that he does have is really cool, like, ninja-looking costumes in Injustice 2. So I think his design, like, his character, like, his costumes that they gave him and custom customization with the masks i think that looks really cool uh gameplay wise you know i i never played him too much not because i didn't know how to play him it's just by choice and since we're going off of like fun factor and all that for the characters that i had fun with raiden is definitely down down there i would put him in d but i think some of his customization looks really cool all right rambo I gotta say, guys, I really, really, really love Rambo as a character. I, I like mostly Rambo 1 and 2. 3 is okay. And then, you know, after that, after that, they're all right. But especially Rambo 1, you know, the, the serious tone of the movie and the performance from sly made me fall in love with the character um so when i saw that he was going to be a guest character i'm like man he might be something like hunter predator because he has traps that he sets he has a lot of potential and when he came out it's like it's like they gave him the tools, but they didn't take it to its full potential. You know what I mean? They gave him like a snare trap. They gave him, which by the way, you can't combo from like one, two, I think, or you can't combo it from, from a lot of things. They gave him like a claymore, which is kind of like a predator trap, but it doesn't really, it's not really as useful as hunter predator trap i could tell that they definitely thought about a lot of things that they could have given him and they did give him they just didn't take them to like a hundred percent it's like they left the moves at like 50 percent it's like you're halfway there but they didn't want to push it too much because they they probably thought he might be a little bit too crazy and if you get somebody in the corner with the claymore it looks like he's insanely good and he might be insanely good i'm not sure i haven't played like too much with him um they gave him a cute little thing with with the crawl thought that was cute i was just very disappointed in how underwhelming rambo was compared to the expectations that i had for him because he sets traps and he had, you know there's just so much potential that he has with the kind of like combat that he displays in his movies and they they went halfway there it's just they didn't finish the job so i'm gonna put rambo down here at c it makes me really sad because i really like rambo a lot all right this character right here though has a saving grace robocop robocop is slow zone heavy i like a lot of the uh, references to the movies but he just feels clunky he doesn't have very many combos but he has the saving grace of nether realm making opening up mortal kombat 11 to custom variations because when you combine the flamethrower and the command grab he becomes a pain in the ass to fight against. And of course, the, the low gunshot, that's not a low, the dick shot. He becomes really, really fun. Really fun for me personally. I have a blast just grabbing people with the command grab like four straight times because they're afraid to get command grabbed out of the roll. And they're afraid that if they press a button, I'm going to hit them with a knee into a flamethrower. And then they got to guess again whether it's going to be a command grab or a knee again. I have a blast playing that character, but that's just like one thing that he has. You know what I mean? It, 
it could get repetitive not for me because you know i i enjoy doing it but just overall as a character i feel like he's right there in the middle nothing like nothing special and definitely not not boring for sure scorpion in injustice was awesome man scorpion injustice was awesome so i'm gonna rank him up here in a um, I, I wasn't playing Injustice when he first was released and he had like the craziest teleport of all time and he had like He was a pain in the ass to deal with because obviously in Injustice there's no block button so you have to block left to right His teleport is so fast. I think it was safe uh, And you had to like switch left to right So I heard he was like an insanely good character real pain in the ass I can't really attest to that because I was not playing Injustice at the time. All I know is that he got nerfed like crazy because he was so good on release. But whenever I have gone back to Injustice, I love playing Scorpion. I love playing Scorpion. He, I think he plays like MK9, right? He just played like MK9 Scorpion. But he's just so fast. And the best part about it is, in my opinion, we got the best Scorpion design of all time, which is his Injustice Scorpion. So I have to put him at A, even though I haven't really played him that much. I have to put him at A because I think his design is that good. And he is fun when I have like played with him. Moving on here, we got Lord, Spawny, and of course, you already know, I have to put him at S tier because Spawn is my favorite character to play in MK11. My absolute favorite character to play in that game because of one move. The soul forfeit move literally that one move made spawn the most fun character to play for me because i just love linking crushing blow after crushing blow after crushing blow after crushing blow it doesn't matter the damage because it doesn't do that much damage compared to you know if you just do like his charge move it doesn't do as much damage but the amount of fun and the amount of like hype moments that I've created with spawn and that move in MK11 is priceless. I feel like his design is over the top amazing. His gameplay, honestly, if you don't have soul forfeit, is nothing too special. He has his change with he has his chains, which allows him to become a mid-range character with good footsies he's kind of slow doesn't have the best pokes in the world doesn't have the flashiest buttons in the world so and doesn't have like the craziest moves you know obviously the charge is really good but it's just launcher right it's just a launcher blah blah we've seen it a lot of times but the soul forfeit move makes this character oh Puts this character in the league of its own for me personally in MK11. So Spawny, you're up there at S tier. And come on, I mean like his design is fucking amazing. His intros, his outros, he has some of the best intros and outros in, in the entire game. Like all four of his intros and all four of his outros could be considered in like some of the top in the game. Which is crazy because not all characters can say that spawn did not disappoint for me because of soul forfeit now if he wouldn't have soul forfeit i might have like put him down to like b that's how important soul forfeit is to me as far as his design you know he was lived up to the hype as far as his gameplay to me lived up to the hype because of soul forfeit if it wasn't for soul forfeit uh, forfeit i definitely would have been very disappointed in spawn but that one move changes everything for me. Sub-Zero, he's MKX Sub-Zero, so of course, come on, man. He's Cryomancer Sub-Zero with an Ice Clone. So it's a great combination. His design looks really cool. I'm pretty sure that Jim Lee also designed Sub-Zero's design for Injustice the same way he did with Scorpion for Injustice 1. So the design looks really cool. You could customize him to look like any of the other ninjas, you know, Reptile, Rain, uh, Scorpion. I think he's really fun. So, obviously, Crowmancer Sub-Zero, I have to put him at A. Terminator, oh, man. 
Terminator is coming to the S party. After they switched, like after they gave him that buff for his teleport, where you could use his teleport in a combo, that to me is when he got elevated to S tier for me because it gave him something that not too many characters have and i made this mistake in my other video because i see it so rarely but other characters do have the ability to use four bars a meter for a combo um but i don't see it too often that's why i, I didn't even like remember i didn't even think about it shang sun could do it and who else could do it there's another character i could do it maybe uh fujin i'm not really sure but you see it often with Terminator now because you got a little bit more damage and the combos look really cool. So he has the running man, the running man move. He has the grenades, which you can use two in a combo. He has the air grab, which lets you extend combos when your opponent's in the air. He has the I'll be back breaker, which leads into a really easy crushing blow that leads into crazy juggle potential terminator is definitely definitely up there as one of the most fun characters in mk11 and it's absolutely insane that three of the guest characters in mk11 are in my s tier because that's how good of a job netherrealm did with the guest characters in mk11 three out of the five guest characters in MK11 are in my S tier. Crazy, because that's how fun they are. So Terminator up there in S tier. Even with Arnold Schwarzenegger not actually being his voice actor, just being the uh, having his uh, you know his face as a Terminator, that's good enough for me. I don't care about the voice too much. You know, there's not too much dialogue. Obviously the intros, but once you get into the gameplay, that's fucking Arnold. Last but not least, the Ninja Turtles. And I'm going to rank them up here at the A spot. I don't think they're as fun as these characters. Come on, man. They're like they're really fun. Mostly to me, Michelangelo and Leonardo are the most fun for me. Um, but like they're really fun, but they're not in the S tier category. They have to remain at A. Sorry, guys. You got to work on being a little bit better next time. So that is it, ladies and gentlemen. That is my tier list of NetherRealm guest characters from Mortal Kombat and Injustice. At the top right there, I didn't really rank them in order except for Predator. Predator is the only one that's ranked up there in order. Actually, you know what? I should probably do it in order, right? Uh, I won't take me that long. Jason is definitely at the end of the S tier for sure. Then you got... I think that's good. Predator. I think that's good there. Um, Leatherface definitely is number one here. Then we go bam. This is definitely at the end because I don't have a, as much experience with him. Actually, you know what? There you go. Alien definitely is more fun than Robocop. Mr. Pasty is right there at number two. And that's it. So, in order, that is my tier list for guest characters and their ratings, their rankings, whatever you want to say it is. From Another Round Games. At tippity top, Predator. At the very bottom, Kratos. Mostly because I don't have the experience with him. He might be the most fun character of all time. But I'll never know. And he's going to be down there at D for me. Because I don't have the experience with him. Let me know down in the comments if you enjoy playing with Kratos. Or if you remember playing with Kratos. Thank you so much for watching. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know down below in the comments. What other lists i should do i was thinking about doing the mortal kombat ninjas male and females together um, but we'll see we'll see what you guys want to see thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys next time
What's going on? It's Super here, and thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you aren't subscribed already, make sure you guys do so. And if you want to see some more, there's videos popping up on the screen right now. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.